BoxingVoice.com here with Jesse Vargas, fresh off of a TKO victory last Friday in LA. Uh, first off, man, uh, stitches healing up good, everything healthy. Yeah, man, thankfully, man, you know, I got 12 stitches, but uh, it's healing up well. Um, you know, I had a tremendous cut, man. He was able to keep everything under control during the fight, and I stayed composed early in the fight, in the second round, I believe. And, um, you know, I just stayed composed and I uh, dictated the pace of the action and, you know, I took him out when I when I saw fit best. He brought it on to you early, but you were able to make the needed adjustments um, just to basically continue, fight your fight, not let him throw you off. Talk to us about the cut because it was bleeding really bad. A lot of us ringside thought that they may even stop it. I didn't it. want them to stop it. Yeah, that's the first thing I thought too, man, because I felt it dripping instantly. It was coming fast. Yeah, so um, thankfully they didn't stop it. I didn't want to get. I didn't want to do that to my fans. You know, just give them a fight where I'm, I'm only fighting two, three rounds. You know, we just came from a fight that was stopped early. I didn't want. When I, when I, at another show, right. you know, where um, I think it was um, another championship fight. I didn't want my my fans to get that same outcome. I said, no, I want to finish in my with style. You know, finish it on my terms, and uh, that's exactly what happened. I fought it out. Uh, Stitch was able to keep the cut under control, and I, um, you know, I fought it out. I mean, Soto came out banging from the beginning. It seemed like he wanted to give it his all, and uh, he did. You know, he said it before in the press conference that he was gonna leave his heart in the ring and he was gonna give it his all as as he always does. You know, he's a, he was a real warrior, and he did just as he said he would. You know, he left everything inside that ring, and. Uh, you know, I just I went in for the kill as soon as I saw the the opening, and I didn't stop. Now the fight was at a catchweight. Uh, talk to us about uh, basically your future. Are are you gonna stay at 154? Is that the plan? Most for definitely. You? This is my division. I'm gonna become a world champion in, in the 154 pound division. God willing. Uh, you know, I feel very good, I feel strong, extremely strong. You know, um, I've never felt this confident. I didn't, better yet, I've never felt this strength, you know, uh, uh, let me rephrase that. I haven't felt this strong in quite, uh, quite some time now, you know, because as training camp, you know, would begin, I would begin strong, but towards the end, I was diminishing, my, str my strength was decreasing. As the weight came. You know, because I was losing weight, and I figured it was just because of the weight, you know, but the minute that I gained it again, you know, I recovered. Right. But you know what, 154 pounds, I finished camp stronger than than i have done in many years recently and uh i was very happy with the outcome it just showed that that this is my weight division and i'm gonna stay here you know and i'm gonna make sure that i become a world champion in this weight division making me a three division world champion three division 140 147 now 154 the name that's been buzzing uh for a while uh with you uh has been jaime munguia uh jaime munguia's name has came up a lot um, did you get a chance to watch his recent performance in Monterrey against Dennis Hogan? I did. I did get to see the fight, and um, it's a good matchup. It was a good matchup. Uh, Dennis Hogan came came in with a lot of experience and uh, you know a lot of heart. He wasn't giving up, and he went into Munquia's backyard and fought a tremendous fight. But you know Munquia, you know he he fought he fought a good one as well. I mean he was in the fight. You know he was in the fight um, from beginning to end. They won the full 12 rounds. I give Mookie a credit because he dug deep. He dug deep to try and pull out the, the victory. And he did so, you know, by defending his WBO title. That is a fight that's being mentioned a lot uh, these last couple months. You know, these last few months, actually. Uh, and it seems that the people are very interested in that in seeing that fight happen. So uh, we'll see if we can make it, if we can if we can negotiate the terms on both sides that way. You know, it, it, uh, it puts... Mukia's team in, in, a, in a position where they would accept the fight. I know Mukia, he's, he's a fighter that that uh, is willing to fight anyone. So I know he's not looking for a way out. It's just uh, we just need to come to the right terms and hopefully we get to make that fight. You know, in Vegas, you know, I'm sure we'll fill up a stadium. I know we'll fill up a stadium. You know, who knows? It could even turn into a Barrera Morales brawl, you know, two Mexican warriors fighting it out. Action Everyone packed. knows exactly. You all know, all the viewers know that uh, when it comes to me being inside the ring, I always give you entertainment. I give it my all. You know, I try to throw as many punches as I can to give you a good, entertaining fight. And that fight, if it happens, any fight, you know, I hope that you can tune in because you're going to get fireworks. Absolutely. Now, um, you're working with the uh, zone in Spanish, correct? Correct. I'll be uh, working the fight for the Canelo Jacobs fight this Saturday night with the zone. So 
So subscribe. You're gonna see a great night of boxing. You know, we have Virgil, Virgil Ortiz versus Mauricio Herrera in the co-main event. Jojo Diaz also fighting. Fonseca, uh, former opponent of yours, Saddam Ali. Saddam Ali is fighting on the show also. Good fighter. Um, former WBO world champion. Uh, you know, we have a side card. Tune in. Um, I'm pretty sure you're gonna enjoy it. And um, you know, it's Spanish. If you understand it, si lo entienden, miren en español. En español se escucha mejor. Este, no más no le digan a Sugar Ray Leonard eso porque luego se enoja conmigo. <laughs> no, esta es la verdad. Honestly, you know, if you speak, if you understand Spanish, tune in to the Spanish portion. We give our honest, honest opinions on things, and um, of course, with a lot of excitement. Obviously, um, you commentate in the card. I know that you can't give your official prediction, but. What do you think fans can expect to see come Saturday night? You know, stylistically, what can we see uh, between Canelo and Jacobs? Usually, I give, um, I give, um, I give, I give tips on who has the advantage. But in this fight here, I don't see anyone having the advantage. You know, um, they're, ver they're both fighters that are very versatile. Uh, they have different styles to them, and um, it's just very interesting what style they're gonna choose to begin with, and then what style they're gonna end with in the fight you know, because they're going to have to adapt to one another style make adjustments, make adjustments as the fight goes on yeah so Absolutely. It's, it's interesting you know, it's a very interesting fight it's going to be a match, uh, get, get, uh, chess match so tune in tune in everybody I think that you know for all you boxing fans you're really going to enjoy this one you know Canelo has a tough tough fight in front of him uh, we'll see if Danny's able to pull it off um, ma many have said this, but would you say that stylistically, this is a tougher matchup for Canelo than both uh, the Golovkin fights were? Given Danny's uh, styles make fights, styles make fights. You know, so they are they are they are all tough in their own way. You know, Triple G was a was a tremendous power puncher who maintained his distance very well. Landed was very very accurate, but against Canelo, you know, he was able to. Maintain good defense, and uh, you know that, that's what helped them come out with the victory. You know, to the defense and him adapting to Triple G style. Just so many things play a factor in that one. Absolutely. Now, obviously, you being at the 154 pound division, uh, you wanted to claim that title in the third division. Next weekend, we have a big uh, matchup at Super Welterweight between Jared Heard and uh, J Rock. Uh, they'll be fighting, obviously, uh, Jared Hurd is unified champion at 154 pounds. What do you think of not just that matchup, but a potential matchup down the line between yourself and the winner of uh, the Jared Hurd and J-Rock fight? I like that. I like that fight. Um, but first of all, let me start off with their fight. You know, it's coming up. I, I, I'm going to stick with Jared Hurd. I think he's a talented athlete, a talented fighter. And... Um, you know, I think he's just going to be able to overpower J-Rock, but we'll find out. You know, we'll find out in a couple of weeks, and then after that, we'll, we'll see what we can do as well. Now, um, Jamel Charlo also is implementing the rematch clause against Tony Harrison uh, in June. June 23rd is the date that I'm hearing uh, from that fight. What do you think of that fight? What do you think of the first one, first off? Because a lot of people didn't agree with the decision. What were your thoughts on uh, the first fight between Tony and Jamel and... Uh, how do you see the rematch playing out? I think it's a tough fight for both. You know, it's about who's going to dig deep. Um, you know, Tony is, uh, is more confident than ever, and that's going to help him in, in the next fight. But then again, Jamel Charlo is more is hungry. He's hungry to get revenge. So again, it's going to elevate the fight. It's going to elevate both of their games, and uh, it's going to make for a good matchup. Now, you being at 154, uh, a lot of the names I just mentioned, um, size-wise, are significantly larger than you. How, do you see that uh, playing an effect in those title matches uh, or potential title matches with yourself? Or do you feel that your experience will be able to overcome and adapt? Not at all, because I mean, I was one of the taller fighters in the welterweight division. Uh, not only that, but, um, you know, Canelo is 5'8", and he's fighting at 160. You know, I'm 5'11", I'm fighting at 154. So it's the perfect, I have, the, I have a great height for it. Um, I fought tall fighters, small fighters in my day, um, years ago, you know, so I mean, I have all the experience, so I'm not really worried when it comes to size advantage because I know I'm big, and also we're also gonna increase more muscle mass, 
you know, uh, functional muscle mass. So we'll be fine. We'll be just fine. Believe me. And uh, follow me on my journey to becoming a three division world champion. You know, please send me to my fights. I know that you're gonna enjoy them because I make certain of it. Now, can't let you go without you being on the DAZN uh, commentating team. Can't let you go without talking about what seems to be like now June 1st, Anthony Joshua and Andy uh, Rees. How do you see that fight play out? You know, obviously a last minute change. Well, I wouldn't even say last minute, a little more than a month out. But coming into the fight, uh, obviously AJ was training for a different opponent. What do you think of the opportunity uh, Andy is getting here? There's two different, listen, um, the fighter, I mean, for Anthony Joshua's perspective, there are, uh, Baby Miller and uh, Andy Reese had a similar style, except for Andy Reese is much faster, stronger. Um, so it is it is a tough task for Anthony Absolutely. Joshua, but it is somewhat of a similar style to Baby Miller because they're, they're both stationary. Once again, Andy Reese is faster, more explosive, and stronger. Uh, that, that can cause problems for Anthony Joshua. Listen, I mean, Andy Reese might not have this, the physique that you're used to seeing but this guy's fast and he's a heavyweight and he can punch and that's going to make it interesting uh, i'm interested in watching the fight i am actually excited for it the heavyweight division is back and uh i think it's going to make for, for a great showdown i mean anthony joshua became the wbo world champion when he defeated parker Parker and Andy Reese had a really close fight. Very close. One Ma many people thought that uh, Parker Andy lost to, 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 to Reese. Right? Absolutely. Exactly. So um, this is Andy Reese's chance to become world champion. So he's going to give it his all. He just came from winning by knockout. Yeah. Well, in the fourth round, I believe it was. Yeah. Re recently, it was on the Danny Garcia on the exactly. card. Exactly. So the I mean, the guy's ready. He's in shape. You know, and um, he does deserve this shot. And. Um, the fighters, the fans shouldn't miss out. They shouldn't miss out because, uh, you know, they're, they're going to see a good show. Jesse Vargas, as always, brother, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much for your time. No problem, anytime. Thank if you, you enjoyed the video, feel free to hit the like, subscribe, and share. As always, if you want to support us to the next level, head over to the Patreon.com, backslash the Boxing Voice. We have tons of exclusive from Border Wars, from Title, betting shows, the list goes on and on and on. But in addition to that, if you guys have questions for fighters, trainers, and promoters, this is where you can submit them. We will run out, get these questions answered, and put it back on the show just for you guys. Appreciate it. Peace.